Hello and welcome to the Hoof GP. Today, we are being graded. We are being inspected. We're being scrutinized. We're on our way to a check day. This is the Hoof GP and today, we're gonna to be trimming cows for someone else and they're gonna tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and what we could improve on, if anything. Subscribe right now by smashing the subscribe button down there and making sure that it's great. And I won't let it rush when I see you dance and the moment comes when I fall and time goes slow I fall into you The hoof trimming industry is actually non-regulated. That's right, you you sitting there with a the coffee on your couch, watching this, trying to ignore the TV in the background, you, yep, could go and trim a cow anywhere you like, right now, and make a complete ass of it, and nobody would say anything about it. Which is mental, it's absolutely crazy. I don't even need to be checked, nobody needs to be checked. But to make sure we're doing everything we possibly can to make the cows as comfortable as possible, we get checked quite regularly to make sure that we are doing everything perfectly. I'm pretty sure I'm doing it right, but it's nice for somebody else to confirm that. Today is my check day and it's Craig's diploma day, so he's actually being examined properly. He will have to do questions and trim a few cows properly and perfectly and, and he'll be scrutinised on those. Confident? Fairly confident. We've just got to the farm and I'll be honest, you guys probably don't think I'm a shy person, but I am. Uh, and I get nervous because there's quite a few other trimmers here. So yeah, holding the camera in front of people as well. Dodgy, it's not good. I shall endeavour to produce a video though, guys. Let's go. Oh, it's not like home here, it's absolutely freezing. It's sunny at home. That's a KVK cross. They have fantastic foot position, so the foot of the cow sits amazingly well. When we first get to the farm, it takes a moment or two to introduce ourselves, get our crushes set up, and get things underway. So there's six trimmers attending today's check day, three of which are being checked, and three doing their diploma. So it's a busy, busy day, and we've got three crushes, so it's good to see different things going on and the different way the crushes work. With the cows, nice to meet new people too. Once the introductions are done, Celia gets straight into the plan for the day. I'm pretty used to these check days because I've done a lot of them, but it's still good to know exactly what's going to be happening. And then we get straight on to trimming some cows. Throughout the day, Celia and John there in the background take it in turns to walk around about the cows and scrutinise the cow's feet that we've trimmed in every single way. But we do have an opportunity to explain exactly what we've done and why we've done it. Sometimes, after a trim has been done, it's not obvious what the foot looked like to begin with. This is a rollover crush, and as you can see, it's very different to what I use. In total, there were five different types of crushes being used, so it's really good to see how the Appleton shapes up against the competition. It's going well, they seem happy enough so far. I don't need to attend these check days. But doing it keeps me on my toes, and that's important. No matter who you are, after trimming tens and hundreds of thousands of cow's feet, you can and do pick up bad habits. So for me, checking days like this are really crucially important to make sure that I'm doing the best job I possibly can, and to make sure my customers have every confidence in me. Throughout days like this, everybody helps each other out. The most logical way for us to set the crushes up was to have Stephen's KVK directly behind my Appleton. So as you can see there, Stephen is putting one cow through his crush and straight into mine. Then we get a second and load his up, and away we go.
All of these crushes have advantages and disadvantages and it's great to get up close and personal to see exactly what those advantages or disadvantages are. It's good to see other people and how they're using their equipment on a day-to-day -day basis and how that differs to how we use the Appleton. And when it comes to the KVK, this little flappy paddle thing on the back is easily my favourite part. So we've just trimmed about five cows, I want to say, and it's going really well. It does make it less nerve-wracking when they're this easy. Despite it being a pretty long day for us, it absolutely flies past. We're extremely busy trimming cows, chatting to each other, and being scrutinised by Celia and John. absolutely great to watch Craig full of confidence and easily holding his own amongst seasoned trimmers. When it came to his scrutinisation from Celia and John, he did extremely well and I know they really did grill him. He was able to talk about the anatomy really clearly and concisely and describe exactly what he'd done and why he'd done it. This was a proud moment for me and him. So Celia just asked me if I had any comments. You ever ask something and wish you hadn't? I think that's what she just did. Bit of bruising to a foot angle too much weight on that side on the medial floor in this case. Yeah, so the foot angle should be about 50 degrees. Yeah, she was pushing too much to the feed fence. Not enough routine trimming, high diet or not walking that much. Poor confirmation in her front feet. Pony tuberosity pushing down on the corium. She's landing incorrectly or there's too much pressure on that part of the foot. It's pushing right down causing the corium to bleed into the horn, causing an ulcer. There was loads of really deep fissures right round there. I think she must have dermatitis or something in the past when we've She has it time and time and time again. But it could be foul on the foot or hoof rot. When they've had foul on the foot, there'll be a separation in here and here as well. So strange working on it. A new farm around loads of other crushes. And I'm desperate that nothing happens to the cows. It's going well so far though. Craig seems to be doing really well as well. They've not given him much feedback yet. 
because they usually do that at the end of the day. So basically what happens is we all trim a few cow's feet, so in this case we've trimmed about six or seven now, and they basically have a look at it, two separate people, so two instructors or two examiners or whatever you want to call it, they both look at it so that we have two individual takes on it. And if you ask them for feedback, they'll give you it straight away. Otherwise, they'll wait till the end of the day and kind of go over good points, bad points, and indifferent points. Either way, it keeps you on your toes. These cows are a real testament to the farmer. Tommy, the boy who works here, does a lot of the feet. And he's obviously well trained and doing a really good job. It's nice seeing cows like this. Comfy, comfy, comfy. There are loads of training outlets all over the world. And the vast, vast, vast majority of them teach the five-step Dutch method. A lot of them say they maybe don't teach that. But quite often, it's a variation or something that they're honing in on that Dutch five-step method. And that's actually what I teach on the online course. The online course that we do is selling ridiculously well. And thank you for buying it, because it's, yes, feedback is awesome, thank you very much. Wasn't sure if it would work or not, but it is working brilliantly. I would still absolutely recommend coming along to do a practical course like this. My online course is to really introduce you and teach you the finer points of the anatomy. With hoof trimming, obviously, it's a really visceral thing. So you really kind of need to get to grips and be commented on by somebody else who really knows their stuff so that they can look and see if you're getting the levels right. After the practical part of the check day is over and done with, it's time for the exciting part. It's time for the theory. We do a written examination that also has multiple choice answers within it. And once that paper is complete, we move on to the oral part of the day, which actually I really enjoy. During the oral part of the exam, we look at slides and photographs of different trims which other trimmers have done, and we comment on how they could have been improved, what's happening in the picture, and how we might have done things differently. We also look at the anatomy, both the internal anatomy of a cow's hoof and the external anatomy. This is a time that you can really get down to the nuts and bolts of hoof trimming. I really enjoy this part of it because I'm extremely sad and need to get out a little more. But seriously though, this isn't just for show, it's not just for YouTube, I absolutely love what I'm doing and I love looking into the depths and the deep anatomy of cow's feet. I find it extremely fascinating the different things and different factors which can impact heavily on a cow's feet and therefore her comfort and mobility. It's been a long but very worthwhile day. It's great getting out and meeting other trimmers and working in amongst their environment with their crushes and their equipment. That being said, it has been an extremely long day and I'm glad it's now starting to come to a close. And with that, it brings us to the end of the video. I've had a great day meeting new people, making sure that my skills are up to scratch and just getting out for a different day out. A new farm is like a day out for me, which is a bit pathetic. I need to get out a bit more, don't I? And for now, that is us out. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.